enter the ball, the ball game that is, the ball games that are played by pennant contenders against other pennant contenders. Is Cinderella a contender or a pretender? We may not know until the clock strikes midnight for real on Thursday night. For. It's late July, and the two teams with the best records in the National League going at it in game one of a five-game series. The St. Louis Cardinals, who lead the Central Division, taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to PNC Park with Steve Blass. I'm Tim Neverett. Dan Potash will join us downstairs in a little while. Just the second-ever five-game series, the first one in 2001 against the Astros. Pirates coming off a road trip where they held serve. Yeah, really, and that was important, to at least break even. You know, and I go back to the Sunday game in Cincinnati, Tim. Uh, I call that kind of a look back. If you have a real good season, that's one of the games you're going to look back at. They needed to get that win, not let Cincinnati gain three games on them. And that 3-6-1 double play was kind of the, the crown jewel of that game. I thought that was a great ball game. I thought that was one of the keys to at least breaking even and having that decent road trip. Take a look right now at the Direct TV standings in the National League Central. The Pirates start the night just a game and a half behind the Cardinals. The Cardinals were swept by the Atlanta Braves over the weekend in a three-game set. The Reds five back, Cubs 14 and a half back, Brewers bringing up the rear 20 back. Yeah, and the numbers tell the story, Tim. It's basically our pitching against their hitting. This series, something's got to give. Pirate pitching, Redbird hitting. The Redbirds are in town for the first of a five-game series. There is a buzz in the Berg about this series. Many are saying it's the biggest in the history of this ballpark. First pitch, and the lineup's just around the corner on Root Sports.
welcome to the North Shore on a gorgeous night. Very, very pleasant here. Fans pouring over the Clemente Bridge and into PNC Park. And a big, big crowd is expected. Big crowds expected for this entire series as we are expecting a very good one. As the Bucks trail the cards by just a game and a half to start this series. Jason Grilly is in the dugout. Had a chance to visit with Jason earlier today. He says he's ready to go and also ready to go is tonight's starting pitcher, Francisco Liriano, who has a team leading 10 wins. And considering, Steve, he missed a month of the season. That's absolutely outstanding. Yeah, he has been terrific. He's won five out of his last six starts. In fact, in his last seven starts, he's only had that one bump against Cincinnati where he gave up five runs. Everything else has been two runs or less. So the lineup, Matt Carpenter leading off. Carlos Beltran will hit in the second spot, leading the team with 19 home runs. He is a switch hitter. Matt Holliday, Alan Craig bats cleanup. He has been very good with runners in scoring position. The catcher, Yadio Molina, bats fifth. David Freeze in third. Shane Robinson in center field. The shortstop, Pete Cosma, hits eighth. And the pitcher, Jake Westbrook, bats ninth against the lefty, Liriano. Yeah, the numbers brought to you by Chevrolet. He has been, as Tim said, terrific. And what do you do against a good hitting team? We're talking about that with Stan and Teak. Well, you give him a lot of things to think about. This guy has three quality pitches. The numbers speak for themselves. But when you have an outstanding fastball, breaking ball, and changeup, you give the hitters a lot to think about. They can't sit on one particular pitch. So Liriano has the ability to mix them up with quality pitches, not just mix them up just to mix them up. But he has those three very much above average pitches to work with. He has only had one start against the Cardinals. It was a successful one. In the outfield tonight. Alex Presley called up today. He makes the start in left field. Alvarez and Barmas on the left side. Walker and Jones on the right side with Russell Martin doing the catching. Allegheny Health Network injury update. Michael McHenry placed on the disabled list today. A sprained left knee. So Presley recalled to take his spot. And the backup catcher is now Tony Sanchez. And I would think the St. Louis Cardinals are not in a good frame of mind having been swept by the Atlanta Braves. So you might have a, a bunch of uh, very disappointed birds. First pitch of the ball game is in for a strike to the second baseman, Matt Carpenter. Well, they'll be at each other by the sixth yeah, inning. They're getting along for now. <laughs> a lot of black and gold here tonight, of course, obviously, and there's more coming into the ballpark as the game progresses. One and one now, the count to Matt Carpenter, who made his first All Star team this year. Second baseman out of Texas Christian University, 318 hitter. And this one is fouled back for a strike. Carpenter who last year began the year as the first baseman and played all over the place including the outfield but has now settled in as the regular everyday second baseman for the Cardinals this year and done such a good job he made the all star team. And Tim while you all were away on that road trip the buzz has been building in Pittsburgh there is a lot of excitement and they're going to get a stroke called that he did commit the swing enough and we're off to a good start a strikeout in front of this huge crowd. One down in the top of the first inning. Now, this town is talking about their Pittsburgh Pirates as you take a look at that bad looking pitch delivered but a wonderful result because Carpenter did not hold off. This house is filling up. They might as well just stay till Thursday night because it's going to be <laughs> full every night. Just don't even go home. Beltran batting right handed. Let's that one go for a ball 1 0. Beltran 298, the batting average, 19 home runs and 56 runs batted in. No pitch misses, two balls and no strikes. It's supposed to be a good week of weather. Summertime baseball, two good baseball teams. I'll tell you that shot we had before you, we started talking it looked like a painting. Of this ballpark with the city in the background. It's, it's the perfect setting. What an easel we have to paint with. Yeah, doesn't that look like it looks like a portrait? And as nice as the ballparks are that the Pirates played in on the road trip, there's still no place like this one. Three balls and a strike 
to Carlos Beltran. Who had a couple of hits in yesterday's loss to the Braves. Uh, pitch to him. Ground ball towards short. There is Barmas. And there are now two gone for the Cardinals in the first. So bring up Matt Holiday. Holiday returned from the disabled list on Saturday. He had a right hamstring issue. He is 0 for his last six. He's one for seven on the current road trip. So encompass the three games to start with the Braves. And a strike to Holiday. And you know, Tim, the, the climate of, of this city right now, so excited about the Pirates, and you, you don't really want to discourage that and say, hey, careful of the euphoria. There's a third of the season left. But you know what? Go for it, fans. As long as the players don't get caught up in that kind of thinking and they stay balanced, go for it. It's it's exciting. It, it, everybody's been waiting for the ball club to come home and start this series. So, yeah, don't hold back. Enjoy it. The Buccos are doing a good job. One one pitch. Just outside two and one and get used to the Cardinals at least seeing them because the Pirates will play them 13 more times after tonight. And with 58 games remaining in the regular season after tonight. That's a big chunk of the season that remains that'll be played against the Cardinals and top of the underneath it and a one two three top of the first inning. And as the Cardinals go in order Jake Westbrook to face the Pirates when we come back. Going to the bottom of the first inning as Jose Tabata will come to the plate. He will lead off. Starling Marte the night off. He's been scuffling a bit lately. Clint Hurdle giving him a rest tonight. So the lineup brought to you by Toyota. Tabata, then Neil Walker in the two spot. Andrew McCutcheon batting 301 in 22 games this month. A 333 hitter with 10 extra base hits and 13 runs batted in. Alvarez batting cleanup. And the first pitch from Westbrook is in for a strike to Tabata. Put your numbers for Jace we Jake Westbrook, and you can look at the numbers, but all you needed to do is watch that first pitch right at the knees. That's where he lives. One ball and one strike to Jose. Jose begins the night hitting 259, a pair of home runs. 12 runs batted in. There's the pitch to him. Breaking ball outside, two and one. And Marte has really been scuffling. Getting a night to get things together. Four for his last 37 since July 20th is Marte to 108 average. So, one hurdle said that sometimes players just need a mental break and watch and get yourself mentally ready to get back in there. And Tabata is aboard. 
Leadoff walk issued by Westbrook. And here's a guy that lives downstairs. You got to get him to elevate that sinking fastball, and you can't chase balls around the knees because you're going to hit the top up. You're going to play into his game and hit ground balls. You've got to you've got to try to really define if it's going to be underneath the strike zone and take it. Make him come upstairs where he's very vulnerable. And by the way, he is very vulnerable in this ballpark. 0 and 5 overall, 1 and 7 against the Bucks career-wise for Jake Westbrook, who has won 105 major league games. He knows what he's doing, but you can't keep chasing the stuff downstairs. It's Walker. There are two men aboard. Now, tomorrow, remember, is a doubleheader, and the reason is on the 16th of April, the game was rained out. Jake Westbrook was the starting pitcher. The game began, and the Pirates in the bottom of the first put four runs on him on five hits. And one of those stats counted, but they knocked him all over the ballpark in that first inning. Newell takes one for the club, and we've got a great start to the ball game. One, two, three for the Cardinals, retired at the top of the first, and the Bucks in action in the bottom half. Andrew McCutcheon, 3 0 1 overall. He's done a good job here in this ballpark, also. Very well at home. It's ball one. Gutchin hitting 333 this month. He's 27 out of 81 in July. 1 0 pitch to Kutch. Foul, it's 1 and 1. 0 oh 5 at PNC Park, as you mentioned, Steve, but everywhere else, 42 and 30. His earned run average here, 724. Everywhere else, 397. And opponent's batting average elevated as well in this ballpark. How many times have we looked at those kind of numbers and said, boy, we're in good shape <laughs> and not have it work out? But the opportunities should exist. The catch and a base hit to center field. Tyler is going to get waved home. The Pirates with a one to nothing lead. RBI single for McCutcheon is 56 run batted in. Well, the fans here are saying, Welcome home, Buckos. Good to have you back off that long trip. What a start. Keep it rolling. Kick the can down the street. Right back through the middle. What you see there from Westbrook, Steve, is something as you know a pitcher never wants to be doing. This early in a ball game in the first inning with nobody out, you're backing up home. <laughs> Walker at second base, McCutcheon at first. Here's Pedro. Alvarez last home run came at Washington on the 24. And he hammers one deep to right field. Strikes again. A three run home run. It's four to nothing, Pirates. Nobody out in the first. How are you liking your buckos tonight so far? A lot of these people have not had a chance to sit down. Now they're back up on their feet again. What a start to this ball game. What a start to this series. What a start to this homestand. We're here. They just kicked the can down to the next street. Pedro Alvarez is now your National League leader in home runs with 27. Wow. <laughs> what a start. It wasn't down as far as Jake Westbrook wanted to have it, and the left hand hitters loved to get down under the ball and golf the ball. The eyes 66, 67, and 68 for Alvarez. And that's the third career home run off of Westbrook for Pedro. So now the Pirates get to start over. Nobody on, nobody out. 4 nothing. bottom of the first. And I saw Alvarez hit that ball, and Beltran never moved. Now there's where he wants to be downstairs. Watch Molina. He wants it down and away. That's where Westbrook lives. But he got it in. Looked like maybe a little bit of a cutter. And Pedro says, see ya. Strike call to Martin. 
One ball, two strikes to Russell. Russell had a couple of hits yesterday. Ended up going two for three with a walk. Yesterday's 3 2 loss to the Marlins. Down to third base. Freeze backed up on it. And there is one out. You're talking about a buzz before this game. It didn't get any quieter. The buzz got louder. Alvarez getting it done. Here's Garrett Jones now batting. Great start for Pedro. Westbrook doesn't give up a lot of home runs. It's just a, a walk, a hit batter, base hit, home run. That quick. Takes ball one. Jones hitting 255. He has 10 home runs. Yesterday had a hit in four trips. He's one for four. It's Miami. Two balls, no strikes to Garrett. Five games against the Cardinals this season. Jones is hitting 438. Seven for 16. Two doubles and a home run. And there's a strike by Jake, but he doesn't want to throw a lot of strikes up there. That was upstairs. That's not home sweet home for Jake Westbrook. Wants to stay away, 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 more away. Two balls and two strikes to Garrett Jones. Francisco Liriano spotted to a 4 0 lead when he takes the hill on the top of the second. He got the Cardinals in order in the top of the first. Jones in the second base with his 22nd double of the year. The Pirates have another man in scoring position. And this is going to be a problem for Mike Matheny because he doesn't want to use a lot of his bullpen looking down the barrel of the doubleheader tomorrow. But his starter is getting knocked around. Again, not far enough downstairs. Jones, he taken it to the corner, and he's at second. And here is Alex Presley. Presley arrived at the ballpark about four o'clock this afternoon, being called up from AAA Indianapolis. Takes the place of Michael McHenry in the active roster. Earlier today, McHenry placed on the 15-day disabled list. Explain me. Yesterday, Michael ran a little bit prior to the game. Worked out for trainer Todd Tomzik. At Marlins Park, and I talked to Michael about it today. He said he was, uh, he was hurting a little bit. Presley sits it up in the air to center field. Shane Robinson, the glasses on, makes the catch, and there are now two down. Well, what do we always say? Max it out. You never know how many you're going to need. But will Clint Barmas get a chance to swing the bat? That's the question. First base open. Here is Clint Barmas. Pedro Alvarez, the home run, is lead leading 27th. And they're going to work to him. Barmas chops this one foul off of his foot. Pedro Alvarez. <laughs> when he hits the ball, things happen. Clear the deck. Pedro Alvarez coming. Pedro found himself in scoring position at home plate. Brought two others with him. Walker and McCutcheon. More ribbies. Barmas went one for three with an RBI yesterday. He started at short. Team high 65 starts at shortstop this year. Bouncing around the Cardinal dugout. Foul ball. It's 0 and 2. But Tim, you know, you know we, sometimes we forget how hard you have to hit a ball when it's that low to carry that far. Pedro has that kind of strength. That ball did not have a lot of height. So for it to carry that distance, it's, it's, it has to be like a vapor trail. 
Oh two coming to Barmas. And that is low. This is the Pirates first four run first inning. Since the 25th of September of last season. In New York against the Mets. I remember when they played the Cardinals last time Westbrook was on the hill here which was the 16th of April. They got four runs. In the first but it was rained out. None of those numbers counted. Barmas a chopper towards short. Cosmo will throw him out. And the Bucks strike first here tonight. RBI single by McCutcheon, but the big blow. Home run number 27 off the bat of El Toro. By Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And buy PNC for the achiever in you. Let's go, Bucks. Great start. Still a long way to go. Just the top of the second inning, but four runs in the bottom of the first for the Bucks. One run by Alvarez. That guy came dressed for the occasion, didn't he? That was an arg. He just did. Well, Alan Craig, Mickey. the cleanup hitter, swings at the first pitch, fouls it back. And when Alan Craig comes up, it's a good thing that nobody's on base because he has been terrific with runners in scoring position this year. 485 his batting average with you know, second and third at least. Ball one, one ball, one strike. Got the tenth best batting average during the month of July, hitting 355. He's fourth in the NL overall and hitting at 325. Third in RBIs with 79. The Cardinals have been getting it done without the home run. They've been getting guys on base and driving him in. They're the top team in baseball and hitting with runners in scoring position, 338 average overall. But they don't necessarily need the home run to drive the runs in. Yadier Molina. He got a lot of base hits. He did a lot of hitting. Lots and lots and lots of hitting. Two balls and two strikes to Alan Craig. 274 team batting average to lead the National League. Got him. Strike three. That's two strikeouts for Liriano, and he's retired the first four straight Cardinals. Yep. Yeah, Alan, uh, don't be a stranger. Tonight's Barrel Automotive League leader stat shows us the National League batting leaders. Johnson of Atlanta, 338. Molina out at the plate, batting at 334. Michael Kadire of Colorado, 330. Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. 
And it takes a strike. And you look at the top hitters. Top ten. Three of them are Cardinals. Molina second. Craig fourth. Matt Carpenter sixth. Liriano gets ahead, nothing in two. It's a good chase of ball. Swing over top of it. Now Molina's got to deal with the possibility of three different quality pitches. One and two, all low. Yeah, had no sale going back downstairs. <laughs> Consecutive fastballs down there. I mentioned the home runs and the lack of them in terms of producing runs for the Cardinals. They've been getting runs scored in a lot of other ways. 498 runs they've scored this year. Only 136 by way of the home run. Molina out on strikes. Three strikeouts now for Liriano. Wants it downstairs. Gets it downstairs. Right at the kneecaps. So Martin framed it up just for good measure. Third baseman David Freeze takes ball one. Freeze hitting 269. He's got five homers. Wine by Liriano in the pitch. Ground ball deflected by Liriano right to Barnes. That one was heading up the middle, and Liriano. Starts a 1 6 3 put out. Six up and six down for the cards. We head to the bottom of the second. And when's the last time the Pirates had a series this big in a division at home? Well, you may have to go back to July 10th, 1997. The first place Pirates opened a four game series against the second place Astros. They would split that four game series. But oh, by the way, uh, Francisco Cordova and Ricardo Racon would pitch a no no in that series. So it was big and got bigger that night. But uh, guys, buzz similar to that. Maybe you tell me, Steve. I'll tell you the buzz uh, that Saturday night when Cordova and Rincon were doing it. On a full house. Shane Robinson takes away the sinking line drive off the bat of Liriano, and there's one down. But that uh, that was a, a buzz, and uh, it was Jackie Robinson night. It was a Saturday night. It was a full house. Uh, Lanny for Terry had the great call. Home run, no hitter. You got it all. Uh, it's uh, still one of the great calls, and uh, one, of, one of the great nights. It was, it was tremendous. I know that was the freak show. That's right. right. It's yep. okay to have that freaky feeling once again, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're hyped about the Buckos. BNC Park definitely leads Major League Baseball in flags. 
can see the place to be. It's the place to be in Major League Baseball. Jose Tavita walked and scored in the first. I'm glad you're with us. If you can't be at the ballpark. Let's gather around the set. Parrot's limbering up, but I thought he'd do that before the game. He must be saving it for the late innings. We're getting ready for this, the hot dog sheet. Three balls and a strike to Jose. Tabata against Westbrook, a 417 hitter. He has 10 hits and 24 at bats against him. Some gaudy numbers for pirate batters against Jake. And th this guy's a quality pitcher. Uh, there was a, a period uh, back in the day where he was averaging 15 wins a season for three or four years. His ERA at home at Bush Stadium is incredibly low. And his Tomlin has walked for the second time tonight. 128 at home on the road, 450. And Jake wanted that pitch. That was downstairs, and he has to deal down there. And it's important that he gets that kind of call. Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief behind the plate, Eric Cooper, Schreiber, and Chad Fairchild. But he did not get that call. And when he is really dealing, he will get a, a percentage of those kind of calls. This guy was leading the National League in ERA before he got hurt. A little elbow uh, problem that put him on the shelf for a month. Yep. This is his ninth start since coming off the DL. May 9th through the 13th of June, he was out. You've got a couple catchers here that are very difficult to run on. This guy is one of the best. Russell Martin is one of the best. And he's got one of those Hall of Fame emblems, or uh, I'm sorry, All Star emblems right there. That, uh, that All Star and Gold Glove. Yeah, it's, it's uh, signified for the Gold Glove. Yeah. You get the gold label on your glove when you when you get the Gold Glove. You might have it all over him. And a walker in the left center field, a base hit. He was aboard for the second time tonight. First and second and one out. Top of the order, setting things up again. Just over the shortstop's reach. Steve Cosma trying to use whatever springs he had, but didn't get him up there high enough. Andrew McCutcheon, one for one with an RBI. They're loving it here at PNC Park in the early going. Well, let's do a rinse and repeat. We did the first time. Base hit and then a home run. You take that. Pitch outside. Touching his last home run came against Washington on the 22nd. Pirates didn't have a home run in the Miami series. There's a ground ball to short. Cosmo. Flips to Carpenter, back to first, safe at first is McCutcheon. Keeps the inning alive, and now runners at the corners for Pedro. How big is that to let your thumper come up again in a situation where he can do a lot of damage? So, yeah, it, uh, it's a disappointment that you give up a run, but you could have given up two and go get your gloves. But now they're still alive with a bat in the hands of Pedro Alvarez. For the second time, your National League home run leader with 27. See, Molina will try to stay away, see it bounce out there. That, that's Westbrook's game right there. Uh, maybe not that that low, maybe not quite that low, but that's that's where he wants to live. He doesn't want to live up around the belt. 18 for 22. Three homers, 11 runs batted in. Westbrook this month, three and one. And a, Sub three ERA, which is good. That's our day automotive key matchup. Day automotive, we're going to make your day. Can you understand that Jake uh, being a little careful, extra careful with uh, Pedro right now after that shot? The sinking fastball downstairs, well away. As long as you don't chase that, you eventually force him to elevate to some degree. Lina Still wants it away. Yeah, again, setting up outside, and Pedro hits this one high in the air, foul on a play. 
But the last time up, Westbrook missed his spot. Pedro didn't. Over the Clemente wall. Not by much, but enough. Two balls and a strike to Alvarez. Top of the third base, McCutcheon at first, two outs. And they want to come inside. Watch out. Rocket hit just foul. And the, uh, the desire to come inside is to come inside far enough so if you hit it hard, that's all you can do. Uh, it's so far inside, all you can do is really pull it foul. So some of those kind of deliveries are by design. Out over the plate to extend the arms at 326 mark. Up and away. 2-2 two, two from Westbrook. Oh. Both parties would like to have that delivery back. Off speed, and that's why Jake got away with it. But that was in that kind of sweet spot. Although, well, I thought it was a little higher that initially. So that's that's what we wanted it, I guess, right around the knees. It looked pretty good before it started dipping. Again, the 2 2. Pedro will get another one. Hit the top of that sinking fastball. Found a new seat and a new friend. I think he's got a ticket. Sure, the usher will be by checking on. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's his, own, his, his regular cage area. Two two again to Alvarez. Full count. And McCutcheon will get a head start from first. Three and two, two outs. Four nothing Pirates on the bottom of the second inning. Pirates are three and two against St. Louis in five games this season. Also Martin on deck. The payoff pitch. Tapped foul. You almost get a feel, even though the Pirates are threatening here in the second inning, that, that Jake is getting that sinking fastball. He's getting a little more where he wanted, obviously more than he wanted, uh, that he was getting in the first inning. One of the swings that are creating contact on top of the baseball. Downstairs, downstairs, downstairs. And mostly away. Down and away. Let's see if. Molina sets up there again. Again, the payoff pitch from Westbrook. Nope. Bit of a battle going on. Yeah, that was up in that 326 area on that uh, batting average grid, too. Clint Hurdle tries to not put any more emphasis on one game over the next, but. Definitely a sense around this city that this game and this series are bigger than anyone this year. 3 2. Ball four, and the bases are full of bucks. Second man, Westbrook has walked here in the second inning. Third man in the game. Mike Matheny might be a little concerned in the early going. Yeah, you can't average 25 pitches an inning and uh, feel good about it. Whether you're the pitcher or the manager. Westbrook out of Athens, Georgia, 35 year old right hander. His 11th start and 15th appearance in his career against Pittsburgh. So Martin takes ball one. And right now, he can't afford really to be all that uh, picky to try to throw the perfect sinking fastball. He's got the bases loaded. Again, you make an elevator, you take some of those low sinkers and don't chase. 1 0. Martin down the left field side and it hooks foul. That cost him a bat, too. It did. He needs a new stick. A ball and a strike to Russell Martin. New souvenir. Got his war paint on. Yeah. Somber looks from the <laughs> St. Louis faithful so far. 
Russell Martin. Pretty good hitter with the bases loaded throughout the course of his career. 28 for 94. That's right, you lay off that simple. Well, the home run that Alvarez hit was only the fourth home run that Westbrook has given up this season. In more than 82 innings. That's some good work from the sinker. Two Goes upstairs two. and got away with it. Jake's going to throw it about 88, 89 miles an hour. So when he goes upstairs, it's kind of an adventure, risky. But you know, if you keep getting batters looking down and they're seeing the sinker, 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 you got that eye level going down, and sometimes you catch batters off guard by coming back upstairs. You change the way they're looking at things. Ready for the 2-2. Bases full. Another full count. Uh, now it gets. Really dramatic. Everybody off to the races. So next pitch from Westbrook will be his 28th of the inning. Top of the runner at third, McCutcheon at second, and Alvarez at first. Mark fouls it off. Keep making it work. Get in the bullpen. Get in the bullpen early tonight. Doubleheader tomorrow. It's not a bad direction to go. Eric Jones waiting for his turn, hoping for a chance this inning. Pirates could really blow the game open here if Martin can get a hit. The payoff pitch from Jake Westbrook to Russell Martin. Struck him out. Nothing across, and the Pirates leave him loaded. There was one hit. Through two innings, Pirates four, Cardinals nothing. Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. And by Levin Furniture and the all-new Levin Mattress Stores. For a great deal on a new bed, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks. Back at PNC Park, we head to the third inning. Four to nothing. Pirates, four runs in the bottom of the first inning. They sit by McCutcheon, scored a run, and then Alvarez a three-run blast over the Clemente wall. And Tim, you know, you, you look at that four nothing, very very quick uh, burst of offense by the Pirates, and uh, it raises the question sometimes. Well, Liriano, does that change his approach? No, no. But uh, first of all, it's not that many runs. It's four runs with eight innings at that point to go. Come back hero, yeah, good good sign. Uh, but Liriano has been around long enough to know too that okay, uh, you know I don't want to get carried away and just start throwing strikes just to throw strikes because you got four runs. That four runs can be gone in a minute, especially with a good hitting team like the Cardinals. So no, I, I think he's going to go to the whip the best he can. You always hear that phrase, pitch like it's nothing, nothing. Well, that's the approach uh, that that you have to have, that you, you must have. And 
It's just up to you to try to follow it as best you can. Shane Robinson puts this one to left field, backing up Presley. He makes the catch. One out. Quick out. That doesn't hurt either. No. And the Adam ball doesn't hurt. That ball is tattooed. Adam. Right at Alex. Well, now you've got Liriano getting set to face the shortstop, Pete Cosma. He is the number eight hitter. 243 average. Pitcher Westbrook coming out on deck. Seven, eight, nine this inning for St. Louis. It was interesting too with that uh, game where Leo Liriano got knocked around in Cincinnati. Everybody said, "Oh my goodness!" After the All-Star game, uh, uh, what's it going to be? What's well, that's the only time in his last seven starts that he's given up more than two runs. Just two, just two. That's the only bump. And you know what? You're going to have a bump like that. But he came right back and threw seven and two-thirds scoreless innings against Washington in that win. Just a couple of hits. Been remarkably consistent. 0 oh, 2. That's inside. Cosma has had hits in eight of his last 10 games. He leads Major League rookies in games played. This is his 95th of the year. 1 2. And Russell holds on for strike three. Fourth strikeout. And there are two men out. Cosma didn't want to leave. Mike Matheny's going to argue with Jeff Kellogg. He wants to know what happened there. Did the ball hit the ground or not? He gets a satisfactory answer from Jeff Kellogg. Now, if Nick Leva was managing Cosmo, would he call him Cos or Cos? That's his nickname for everybody. You call him Cos. Cos, yeah. Or he call him Cosmo. Yeah, there's the pick by Russell. There's Westbrook. He has five hits this year, five out of 24. 208 average. He has tied Bob Walk uh, in his career for Major League home runs with one. And it ties you also. Yeah. It's in a three way tie. Minus a streak. <laughs> oh, it was? Yeah. It was one in a row. One in a row. I can say I was only seven behind Dale Long's uh, record of like eight and eight games. Oh, that's a uh, seven back. I'll get your places. One and two now to Westbrook. It's looking good for Francisco during this at bat right here. 10 and 4 for Liriano. 1 2 pitch to Westbrook. Ground ball to the left side. There's Barmas playing it in the hole. And his throw got him. 9 up and 9 down for the Cardinals to start the ball game. Tough play. Made it look easy. Bottom of the third coming up. 4 0 Pirates.
Busy ballpark tonight. Four nothing Pirates. Francisco Liriano getting the benefit of a good play by the sure glove shortstop Clint Barmas. Throwing on the run back across the body. You know he makes it look easy. That's an above average play. He's got a spoiled on some of those. Garrett Jones takes ball one to lead off the Pirates half of the third inning. Jones double down the right field line in the first one for one tonight 258 the average now used it by three points people keep saying well the mantra is is to add on add on I, I don't know what that means is it Mickey mantra <laughs> but just add on <laughs> outside for a ball and it's three and0 to Jones and the pitch count keeps adding up for Jake well into the 50s now starting his third inning Jones hits the 3 0 deep to center field Robinson back and he makes a great catch what a catch by Shane Robinson the running over the shoulder grab Boy, and Jones really stung that one that comes up empty you can hear the crack of the bat but it looked like it looked like Robinson had it measured the whole time Going back, he's locked in, he's locked in, and stays with it. That is a very, very good play on a ball that was tattooed. They're one out now, the Pirates out for the third. Robinson, doing some nice defense. You'll normally see John Jay in center field, but Robinson going tonight. Presley, second time up for Alex. She joined us late for any reason. Alex called up today from AAA. Michael McHenry on the disabled list. Tony Sanchez now the backup catcher. Starling Marte, one for his uh, or three rather for his last 37. So he was uh, getting a break tonight. Asked Clint Hurdle about it in his office before the game. He just said sometimes. You need to give the mind a break. He said Marte may be used late in the ball game if needed. What's well, going to happen? You're going to run into those situations. He's a, he's a young player. Part of the evolving, maturing process. He is looking at a 3 0 count, takes this pitch, 3 and 1. Step back, take a day off, take a deep breath, kind of collect yourself a little bit. Start all over again. Who would have thought you could take a picture with a telephone? Strike two. Whoever thought you could talk on a camera? Whoever thought you'd have a cow in section six? <laughs> it's just I'll tell you, everybody's excited. All business. Every, everybody's excited about the Buckos. We'll jump her over the mound. That is towards second base. Carpenter just got him. Oh boy, a bang bang play. That could have gone either way. Well, you got about 25,000 umpires who didn't think he got him. And now Clint Hurdle is going to join that chorus. Well, Eric Cooper's going to hear about it right now. Rick Sofield, first base coach, already in his ear. Hmm. Nothing's going to change, but Clint's going to get his money's worth and he's going to back up his player. Part of that whole approach is to let the player know that you've got us back. And you're going to plead his case. Presley, good hustle down the line. Might have beat this one out, but called out. We'll get a look at it, I'm sure. Clint states gets, his case. It's an A from the crowd, A for effort. It's on the back. Ball's not in the glove. He was safe. Slowing it down on the AGH can. Hard to tell from the back angle of Alan Craig. That first one showed us. Still saw a lot of baseball. Hopefully the 
couple of tough the, uh, situations. Thing will even itself out. Yeah. The line drive hit by Jones. And then the play at first base. The Pirates could be in action again. Didn't happen. One and one the count to Barnes. Toward the gap, but hanging up for Robinson. And the Pirates gone in order for the first time tonight. We'll head to the fourth inning at PNC Park. Pirates four. Cardinals nothing. Come to town this Friday at 7:05. All fans can take home a Pirates T-shirt at the gates, courtesy of Central Blood Bank. Get to Federal Street before the game for a Budweiser block party featuring local live music, and meet Pirates alum Bill Verdon at the Budweiser bar. Tickets Pirates.com/free shirt Friday. Charlie Roger flying high tonight on that watercraft. Spirits riding high here. Start of Game One. Pirates with a four-nothing lead. Four run first inning. Pedro Alvarez a three run home run. That's a tough time to hit right now, this time of night, with that reflection off a building across the river. Good. Especially right now. Top of the order, Matt Carpenter. Let's see if Pedro still one. has his knuckleball. Oh, yeah, he's still got the good knuckleball going. Kind of a signature as he takes the ball as they throw it around the infield and they throw the ball down to second base to start an inning. Carpenter to center field and McCutcheon opens up the back pocket. Makes the catch. Ten in a row to start the ball game for Francisco Liriano. Oh. Not going to start too much better than how Liriano has tonight. Oh. Eltron grounded out to Barmas first time. Which hitter batting right handed against the lefty. And you, you talk about the numbers for Liriano coming into the game 89 innings, 70 hits, ninth, uh, 19 less hits than innings. I mean, it's, it's pretty darn good, and he's added on to that inning stretch. So now it's 10, so it's 99 with 70 hits. I mean, that's outstanding. That's Jeff Locke type stuff. <laughs> Jeff Locke's number is very good in terms of innings and hits allowed. One ground ball to third, past Alvarez and into left field for the Cardinals' first hit of the ball game. That ends the run of ten in a row. Sharply hit enough where Pedro was not able to get over there and get it. Didn't miss by much as he gives the body up. Actually, the ball just bouncing up over the glove. Not sure what he'd been able to do. Had he gotten the ball in the glove, but with his arm, he never, he never leave out the possibility that he can get it across the infield. Matt Holiday, the team leader in grounding into double plays, he's grounded into 22 of them. 
See the reflection of the sun on his face off the building across the Allegheny. There's a ground ball. Past Walker in the right center. Beltron will have to hold at second base. So one out and back to back hits by the Cardinals in the fourth. Runners at first and second. There's that glare coming off the building. A ground ball would have been a double play, but the, both these ground balls find the hole. When you watch Matt Holliday against the Pirates, and I'm not sure about the other teams he plays against, but I know against the Pirates, Matt Holliday gets the bulk of his hits to that side of the field. Four hits allowed in his last 11 innings, and two of them here in this inning. Alan Craig, the cleanup man. Craig's numbers with runners in scoring position. Very impressive. When they're given a lot, a lot of room in the hole between third and short with Clint Barmas sliding up towards second base. You see a good bit of that dirt in between Pedro and Clint. Ball fouled off. Alan Craig, a 485 average with runners in scoring position. We're hitting cleanup. You don't need to hit a lot of home runs when you're hitting 485. So hit about every other time up. You know, the Cardinals don't run a lot because they don't have to. They score a lot of runs without taking the risk of being thrown out at second base. One ball, one strike pitch to Craig from Liriano. Thank you. One and two. Walker, boy, he punched in uh, for work today, ready to go to work. Pedro, they got back home off the road, and they're ready to work here at PNC Park. Take a look at the uniforms. Two on, one out, one ball, two strikes. Lariano stretch pitch to Alan Craig coming, struck him out. Fifth strikeout for Liriano. There are two men down for the Cardinals. Check the location. Downstairs, not even close to being in a strike. Now Westbrook likes to do a lot of that with a sinking fastball. Now Francisco is taking a little something off the breaking ball, and they're not picking it up in time to lay off. Catcher Yadier Molina struck out looking in the second inning. Doesn't get any easier with these Cardinals, does it, with the batting average oh. and production? Well, Molina came in with a 334 average. It's dipped down to 333, so once every three times up, he gets a hit. Liriano practicing what all good major league starters have to do work out of jams, minimize damage, even if he gets nicked. Don't let it get away. Oh, one coming to the Cardinal catcher. That's strike two. You know, he's hitting 333. And he's also one of the best defensive catchers in the business. Some would argue the best. Well, when I talked to Tony La Russa a year before Tony retired, I said, Who's your most valuable player? You know, and that's when Albert Pujols was around. He said, He never hesitated. Molina is the man on this ball club. Nothing in two to Molina. Now he didn't put Albert down. No. <laughs> or would you want to when he was doing what he was doing? He struck him out. Cardinals get two hits and they leave two. Liriano shuts the door. Racking up the cage.
back opener of a five game series. Here's a look at the road ahead for the Pirates brought to you by Nissan. Tomorrow's doubleheader Tyler Lyons will go against A.J. Burnett in the opener at 405. And then it'll be Lance Lynn against a TBA. The Pirates say they know who it is. They have not announced it yet and uh, would not tell the media this afternoon. Aren't you required to? Well, they, they didn't do it. So whether they're required to or not. What's, but, what's the secret? <laughs> well, it, it, I mean, if you just look into it a little bit, and uh, I know Neil Huntington said on his radio show yesterday that it would be one of three players, either Chris Johnson, Stolme Pimentel, who would make his major league debut, or Brandon Compton would come up for another start. And we saw earlier. Chances are it would be Compton if you just had to guess at this point. But they are uh, they're not confirming the starting pitcher for game two as of yet. Otherwise, the rest of the rotation for the remainder of the series will remain the same. I wonder if we're trying to just trick them. <laughs> One, two to Liriano. That's outside. Two and two. Liriano, last time up, hit the ball right on the nose. A sinking line drive to shallow center, but Robinson, who was playing him in shallow center, came on to make a shoestring catch. He hits it out there to him again. And Liriano getting the bat on the baseball, but he's 0 for 2. Did a back in a row now set yeah, down by Westbrook. A lot of action to Robinson in center field. Jose Tabata has walked twice. Scored in the first inning, stranded at third in the second. Takes a strike from Westbrook. It's a great shot, isn't it, from the right field corner? Way up high. I don't think you get any bad shots in this ballpark tonight. Another great look. They're everywhere. Top of the right field. There is Carlos Beltran for the up. Two down, and Neil Walker will come up. You actually got to tip your cap a little bit to Jake Westbrook, who has gotten it together after really just good. Run out in the top in the bottom of the first inning. And he has kept it together for Mike Matheny, giving him innings prior to the doubleheader, and really hasn't let the ball game get away. To be quite honest. Walker second in the batting order tonight. He hit third yesterday in Miami. Went one for four. Saturday had a great game. Went three out of five and knocked in two runs. Had a pair of doubles. A one pitch. Now it's 0 2. Pirates hoping Walker can increase the production some. Just six home runs and 30 RBIs at this point. And tonight, Steve, believe it or not, is the 104th game of the year. 58 regular season games to be played after this one. 13 of those 58 against the Cardinals. So, about a quarter of those games against the Cards. And you vague it, you break it down to kind of a vague terms. Uh, you got a four, a six month season. You got two more months. You played two thirds of the season. Two and two to Neil. And of course, uh, Pirate fans are so very sensitive to August and September of the last two years. But I, I, I think I, I really do believe that that they believe that this is a deeper ball club, especially with the pitching. It was hit by a pitch for the second time tonight. Let's have a base runner in the bottom of the four. Neil's not only wearing the dirt, he's worn a couple of baseballs tonight. Starting pitchers take note. And just kind of turning the other cheek, as it were. So that's great analysis there, Steve. Well, you know, it just uh, is the way it is. The catcher fouls it off. That ball's in one strike. Two men out, one on for the Pirates in the fourth. Four nothing lead. 
Pirates at home this year 32 and 18. Cutchins average 302. He had the day off yesterday in Miami. Asked him about it today. He said every once in a while it's a good thing. And when you say day off, it's relative to baseball. He did pinch it late in the game, so he did correct me. He said, Well, I had eight innings off yesterday, not the day. I said, okay. it, it, it is a big difference, so. A little different feel. One one. Two balls and a strike. Touching would pop out in his only at bat. In yesterday's game, an 0 for 1. Had a lot of friends and family on hand from the Fort Meade, Florida area down in Miami to watch him play in person. For the first Walker falls back to the first base back. Jake wanted to hit him again. <laughs> He's got him twice. The Walker's been on base all three times. His on base percentage gets a bump. 2-1 to catch. Slow ground ball foul. Two balls, two strikes. This month, McCutcheon has 14 runs batted in. And five home runs in 23 games. And both of his triples this year have come during the month of July. Stretch by Westbrook. Two ball, two strike offering. Three and two. And now Neil gets a, a head start. That would be a good thing if Andrew were to hit a triple, because it could be somewhat embarrassing. Not, okay. not that not that Neil is slow. Just saying. He hit his second triple of the year Saturday night. First one came on the third of July. Payoff pitch from Westbrook. Walker goes and McCutcheon taps it slowly to short. Charging is Cosmo. Just gets McCutcheon. No runs, no hits. And one man left out of the fifth. Pirates on top for nothing. As we move to the fifth inning, and you know, before Mike Matheny became a big league manager, he was asked to coach a youth baseball team. Now, this is interesting. It sparked an idea to write a series of conditions he required before he agreed to lead the team. The list was a hit, and it quickly spread across the country through different levels of baseball. It's now called the Matheny Manifesto, and it can be found on his website. So let me get this straight. He retires in 2006, never coaches at the big league level, and is hired by the Cardinals as their manager just two years ago. Uh, he must have said something right in that manifesto, huh, guys? Absolutely. And this guy has those kind of credentials, Dan, and very well respected uh, 
one of the best plate blockers too uh, to go on top of uh, the uh, the cerebral approach. Uh, he was a guy that had concussions and, and issues, and a uh, good bit of the reason why his playing career was not uh, continued for a lot more years. One ball and two strikes. Now, I'll tell you, intervention this year. This is this is it now. We're all we're all good to go. We got Paul Hogan up in the back. Crocodile Dundee. Falls fouled off. Everybody loves the Buckos. More face paint. That's serious preparation for this ball game right there. Cruz fouls it off. That's one of those makeup things that you want to make sure it's going to be a sunny. You don't want to get to the ballpark and have the game rained out and do all that work. And especially if you're sitting there and you talk about running mascara. There's the one two to freeze. Oh, Tapper back to Liriano. Gives his position nicely and throws him out. Come down for the Cardinals in the fifth inning. MLB.tv celebrates 11 years. Catch all of the second half action in HD quality. Watch every out of market game live on more than 350 mobile and connected devices. Visit MLB.tv today. MLB.tv baseball everywhere. I'll tell you, Tim, I don't know of anybody, any pitcher that gets the ball with time to throw, that throws with as much consistency and a little stuff on the ball to first base than Liriano. He sets himself, and it is a strike with something on it to first base. I, I watch him when he makes those plays when he's got time even when he doesn't have time he sets himself and turns it loose 1 0 pitch Robinson takes a strike yeah, he throws that four seam fastball straight to first mm -hmm. yeah and it's a strike a one out base is empty in a 1 1 count on Robinson it's in the dirt Robinson is over his last five Look at that sky. Pretty night, nice. Pittsburgh. It's outside. Pirates and Cardinals playing at room temperature right now, too, which makes it even better. Summertime baseball in your hometown. There's it. There's the Farmers gloves. Leaping throw. He got him. Two down. Cliff Farmer is very sure gloved out there. A lot of the plays look routine. Well, if we could bottle this up every night, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? Pete Cosmo, the shortstop, struck out swinging in the third. One. one thing that Liriano's been able to do is get a number of guys to chase. He's got six strikeouts tonight. His slider's been very effective. And a bouncer towards second base. So is everything else. Three up, three down for the cards in the fifth, Francisco Liriano. He's retired five straight, four nothing Pirates.
Coach Days at PNC Park this Sunday. The Pirates and Rockies go at it at 135, and all kids 14 and younger get a Pedro Alvarez replica Sunday alternate jersey thanks to People's Natural Gas. Number one Cochran Family Fun Zone prior to the game. Kids run the bases afterward. Pirates.com to get your tickets. Looked like a matador there. So yes. the, uh, El Toro. Yeah, it all fits. Yeah, and he's up leading off the inning. Bottom of the fifth, 4 nothing Pirates. Swing and a miss. Pedro walked his last time up after hitting a three-run homer in the first. You're not waiting until the ninth inning. He's getting cranked up. Well, every kid in Pittsburgh ought to have a Jolly Roger, don't you think? See the tweets at the bottom of the game rolling across the screen, brought to you by AT&T. Everyone is going ham. What does that mean? Oh boy, Steve, I don't know. Do you? Do you know what it means? Everybody is going ham. That's what it said. Okay. Maybe he's ordering dinner. Hashtag Bucks Booth will get you to us here. Two one pitch. Oh, it's three and one. Pedro's hit safely in 30 of his last 36 games. So this one down the left field side a long way. Foul. Even when he doesn't get it very well, when he goes to the opposite field, that ball travels a long way. Payoff pitch coming from Westbrook to Alvarez. Mm, right Struck there. him out. Got him looking. Pitcher's pitch right there for Westbrook. They're low on the strike zone. Of the knees where he likes to work. And he is giving his manager a good effort. He really is. In a couple of different ways. Also got him hit by a pitch. Third man that has been struck by a pitch by Westbrook tonight. Walker twice and now Martin here. So the Pirates with a runner aboard and one out for Garrett Jones. Way off the armor. Greatest quote I've ever heard about that armor that some of the hitters wear was by Bob Gibson. Yeah. When they asked him about Barry Bonds and all the other, he said, I still could have got him. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jones and at the board. The first base. Steve, I understand you've been uh, issued another accolade. You were inducted into a, a, another Hall of Fame, weren't you? Hall of Very Good. Oh, the, yeah, the Hall of You're Very in the Good. Hall of Very Good. <laughs> Hall of Very Good. You and uh, Dale Murphy, the former Brave, which is pretty good company today. I'm not sure I understand all of what it is. The Hall of Very Good. It's very good company. You're in yeah. the Hall of Very Good. Yeah. Very and, flattering. Uh, very flattering uh, to be in a in a group of Dale Murphy. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the, the real real good players and, and good people in the game. Yeah. Had a chance to chat with Dale for quite a while when we were in Atlanta. He was doing. Uh, some of the radio broadcasts there, and boy, he just uh, yeah, he's he's all good. He's better than very good. Yeah. But, uh, it's Hall of Fame good. But yeah, you're in the Hall of Very Good. Hall of Very Good.com, and you can find out about Steve doing in the Hall of Very Good. A lot what a of, big lead. A lot of good people, and a lot of nice things to say about. Mark on his way to second base, and Jones out at first. Boy, Russell was just way off first base. No surprise he took off. Three on the put out as Carpenter throws out Jones. So Martin swiped the bag yesterday, stole third base. Kind of surprising everybody with the Marlins. Ended up scoring a run in the second inning of that game yesterday after the swipe of third. By the way, this is kind of interesting right now with two outs and the Pirates batting in the bottom of the fifth. Westbrook is scheduled to 
that leadoff in the top of the six. Nobody warming up. So again, he has uh, got it all squared away. And, and every big league pitcher has been around a while. We'll have games like this when you get knocked around and, and knocked around significantly in the first inning. If you stay around long enough and you learn enough from that, you will win a game like that in your career or two. And uh, he's, he's not let this game get away, and he's going to get a chance to bat. Alex Presley ahead, no balls, two strikes, or behind rather, no balls, two strikes. Westbrook ahead. Cardinal bullpen empty right now, or not empty, but nothing really going on. So, so spectators. Watching on from the pen. Alex is 0 for 2. Fly out, ground it out. He pokes it down the left field side, just foul. I think the, uh, by the way, the induction ceremonies in the Hall of Very Good are in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Are they? Uh, hopefully on an off day. Have you ever been to Fort Wayne? No. Well, I've been there a number of times. Neat place. It's the home of the old War Memorial. Do you do you think that you could make a list of every city that you've broadcast and that would it would be a significant list. <laughs> it would be. I've been to the big cities and the little ones. <laughs> you're, you're being inducted in the hall of the very well traveled. <laughs> you have you have it includes, a lot of stops. It includes a few other countries too. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of continents. One two a tapper to the right side. Carpenter throws out Presley. Pirates will leave a man. No hits. We're heading to the sixth inning at PNC Park. Bucks up 4 nothing. The whiff brings you night of strikeouts for Liriano. Six of them already. Reduce the number of out of the chases. strike zone. Yep. Out of the strike zone. In the strike zone. Gotten into chase. Another pitch downstairs. We've been called a ball. And another. So they have been really, really going after that low pitch and coming up empty. They're brought to you by head and shoulders. I use the head and shoulder. Just singular. I, I don't have to use a lot of it. <laughs> Shoulder. I, I don't find it hard to believe. How's it working? Inducted into the uh, hall of the, of the very bald. <laughs> <laughs> well, now some activity as Mark Zabchinski lefty gets out. Begins to work for St. Louis. And that'll be it for Jake, Jake Westbrook, who did what he could after the first inning. Did it very well. well. Tony Cruz will come on to pinch hit. Three for nine as a pinch hitter. 204 for the Cardinals. 
10 hits and 49 at bat, so limited duty. One ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. The right handed bat options off the bench for Matheny are limited. And Cruz and Rob Johnson. The three lefties on the bench Matt Adams, Daniel Descalso, and John Jay. Two balls and a strike to Cruz. We talked about swinging a pitches out of the strike zone. One of the big numbers kept on pitchers now is chase percentage. 2 1. This one hit in the air to right center field. Long run from the pitcher. He's going back and he's not going to get it. Cruz around second. He's heading for third base. And Tony Cruz is in with a pinch hit stand up triple. It just kept running away from Andrew and had a lot of carry to right center field. That is kind of a go zone out in that direction toward the Xfinity sign. He's got a lot of push to right center field. Andrew can run a lot of these down and comes very close. Look, is not able to get it that close. Just kept slicing. And now the Cardinals have reason to cheer for the first time. They're that close to getting on the board. First triple of the season for Cruz. Carpenter, top of the order up. Finds this one to center field. That's going to drop in for a hit. The Cardinals are on the board. It's four to one. The Carpenter RBI number 51 for the All-Star second baseman. And the pinch hit triple by Cruz sets the table. Carpenter knocks him in. And so you get a whole different look to this ball game now. After the triple, you get the short base hit that drops in front of Andrew, and now it's a 4-1 ball game. It looked like the, the Pirates were off to the races offensively. They have not scored, and now the Cardinals making noise, and, and this is a baseball game. There's been absolutely nothing determined yet. Three-run lead for the Bucks after a four-run first inning. He had the bases loaded in the second, couldn't get anybody in. And a strike called to Beltron. After that, they won an order in the third. Didn't get a hit in the fourth, but had a base runner with a hit batsman. Same thing in the fifth. The last hit for the Pirates was off the bat of Walker in the second inning. One and one to Beltron. Beltron one for two, had a base hit in the fourth. Bounced into just five double plays. That's not an alarming number from his standpoint. Mariano has been able to go to the whip when he's been uh, run at by the Cardinals. Uh, two strikeouts in the fourth inning after base hits uh, from Beltron and Holiday. He's been able to go to the strikeout pitch and a good many of them out of the strike zone. Now we mentioned that the Cardinals do not do a lot of running. You combine that with the job that Russell Martin has done. So yeah, you might see them go in a certain situation, but they don't do a lot of it. And Russell Martin leads the majors in caught stealings with 20. That's 54 percent when you take a look at the attempts, which is astounding, astoundingly good. Another foul ball, back third base. Now Francisco has been getting a lot of the swings and misses down in the dirt with that slider that breaking ball. He came upstairs and got a swing and a miss by Beltron earlier in this at bat. You wonder if they would revisit that neighborhood. Now, the risk is that Beltron has 19 home runs. He can hit the ball over the fence to the opposite field. So it is risky to come upstairs. Ready for the one two pitch. Try to get him to chase again down there. Slider's been a good chase pitch for Liriano. He has 40.4% chases on sliders. That's way above the major league average of 32.3%. So two to Beltron, four to one now in the top of the sixth. Yes, he got it. Downstairs. 
Good chance that that's under the line in the grid that we'll be showing you momentarily. But you're not going to do a lot of damage with that. You might get a base hit. Yeah, that's that's downstairs out of the strike zone. Once again, he adds to that total by getting them to swing at a pitch that's too low to hit. So the change up and then he's way above the league average there as well. 37.2 percent chases on change ups. <laughs> league average just over 33 percent starts Matt Holiday off with a change. One out one on for the Cardinals top of the sixth. What's Beltran fastball 92 93 94 in that range. So these are all off that pitch off that pitch. There's a ground ball to third base. Pedro goes to Walker for one. The return double play. 23rd double play Holiday has grounded into this year. The around the horn twin kill ends the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the sixth. Four to one Pirates. is brought to you by five hour energy shots and by day automotive we're gonna make your day let's go box four to one buckos lead it coming to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning at pnc park game one of a five game and four day series against the cardinals join the pirates and Pirates Charities as we stand up to cancer at PNC Park Friday, August 16th. Bucks hosting the Diamondbacks that night. Ticket packages are $40 and $10 goes toward the fight to end cancer. Plus receive a stand up to cancer cap, cheer card, and other items. For more information, go to pirates.com slash SU2C. And uh, Tim, I had a chance to uh, spend some time up at Seven Springs as you take a look at Mark Sepsinski's numbers. Uh, for the glimmer of hope luncheon uh, uh, research and the fight against uh, breast cancer. And great turnout there. Sally Wigan made the trip up to support that cause. Great turnout. Great, uh, great event. A lot of things, uh, a lot of traveling around while you guys are on the road. I'm happy to be up there for that. Busy guy. Well, those are good things to be busy with. Cardinals follows it back. Well, Westbrook went five innings, four runs on four hits. He walked three and struck out two. One and two to Barmas. Zipchinski. Traded from the Blue Jays a couple of seasons ago to the Cardinals. I don't know how many points you get in Scrabble for Zipchinski's last name? Well, back years ago, there was a very slight right hand pitcher named Larry Backenhaster for the Cardinals. And the name on his uniform, you couldn't tell where it started and stopped. 
In the air to left center, Matt Holliday giving it a run ball, carrying well, and that's going to get down and go off the wall. And Clint Barmas is in with a leadoff double. And that looked like one of those slow motion movies that uh, you, you couldn't tell if they were going to get to it or not, but that ball had a lot more carry than it looked like when it came off the bat heading toward the 410 sign, and they never did catch up to it. Clint gets a lot into this one. And great hang time, by the way. It was up in the air forever, and they weren't playing him deep enough, so they got burned. If they're playing him kind of at a normal, more normal depth, they might be able to run under that ball because it had great height. But they play him short, he burns him. Way to go, Clint. Well, the Pirates will play for one run as they'll get Lariano to try to sacrifice Barmas over. He takes the ball in the dirt. Double number 10 for Clint Barmas. You'd love to answer that one run in the top of the inning. You'd love to. One and one. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that one. He'll look down at Nick Lay, but Nick's not even looking at him. You know, it's pretty obvious. You're, you're there to bunt, Francisco. <laughs> Don't need a reminder. Follows okay. this one back. Yeah, I think you don't need much of a sign for pitchers in certain situations. This one of them. Now they just confirm it now with two strikes. Here comes the one two. Lorraine gets it down in front of the plate. Barmas unable to move up. And with Liriano not running. Molina could take his time and throw it down there, but Liriano figuring there was going to be a, a sacrifice situation to move a runner over, but he knew, I think, that he was going to be a dead duck with Molina throwing the baseball. So one out, and it's not the first time we've seen that this year, actually, where you've had a sacrifice situation with a guy at second base. And the bunt put in play and not able to get the runner over. Barmas has to make the read as a base runner. Whether or not to go and in that situation he made the smart read because Molina would have gunned him out easily at third. No, he, yeah, that ball was just out in front of home plate. Nowhere for Clint to go. And wrap the. Uh, Pal around the pitching elbow. Kind of common practice. Tower looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 1. Walk twice. And there's a double play ball right at Carpenter. Blistered. Nothing Barmas could do about it. No runs a hit. That's it. 4 1 bucks.
the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Gabby Sanchez takes over for Garrett Jones to start the seventh inning. Defensive replacement for the Pirates late in the ball game. Along with Steve Blass and Dan Potash, Tim Neverett with you here in game one. Tomorrow, a doubleheader. And the Cardinals, uh, just a little while ago, have made an announcement regarding their starting pitchers tomorrow. They're flip flopping. They're going to have Lance Lynn oppose A.J. Burnett in game one, and then Tyler Lyons will oppose a to be announced pitcher for the Pirates, possibly Brandon Compton. They're going to flip flop, and instead of having the rookie go against Burnett in the early game tomorrow, it'll be Lance Lynn instead. And Craig fouls his pitch back, one ball and one strike. And I was listening to the uh, the pregame show on radio yesterday when uh, Clint was talking about Burnett. Uh, originally, uh, thought he might pitch the second game, and then came back and. Uh, uh, Maybe veteran status uh, being a factor. Uh, said he preferred the first game. I, I never wanted to pitch the second game. It was just waiting around too long. I think uh, most guys that have been around would, I would think, would prefer to get out there and see what they have rather than sit around, and wait, and stew, and fret, and worry. Back to the Craig. So far as advertised, the Pirate pitching against the St. Louis Bats, something had to give. So far, it's been Pirate pitching. Another chase, that strikeout number eight. And that ball just really running away. Just like he turned it over, made it just almost like a screwball. Watch this ball run. Wow. Again, out of the strike zone. Screwball, Mike play our screwball, just running away from that right in batter. Well, this is the seventh time this season that Liriano has struck out eight or more in a game. His season high is 11. Struck out 11 Cincinnati Reds on the first of June. He's picking up that outside corner. Now he has just been flat out terrific. The one blemish that start against the Reds. Give you a mulligan on that one. Coming right back in from the outside corner, trying to pick up the inside corner. Staying out of the hitting zone as much as possible. Two ball, one strike pitch. Now Molina gets ahead of Liriano, three and one. And that's what a guy hitting 330 or 334, whatever it is, coming into the game, laying off that downstairs slider that is so tempting and so many people have chased. And there's a strike. And he gets full to Molina. Might have got the call. And if we show you the grid, that's going to be either on that line or just barely below it. He is not not in that hitting zone at all. That was a good one, Hopper to Clint Barman. The comeback. And what is becoming a tight ball game? You don't want to walk anybody. And he has not. Just refusing to go to go in the middle of that strike zone. <laughs> Two outs, bases empty. David Freeze, third baseman at the plate. Freeze, 0 for 2, rounded out twice. Once off the glove of Liriano. He had a ball that was headed to center field in the second inning with two men out. And Liriano reached down, deflected it over to Barmas, who picked it up and threw him out. Had he not deflected it, it would have been the first hit of the ball game. And they call the guys in the pen the shark tank, but we had a picture of Ray Sears. I, I would say. 
Ray's got his dirty dozen. And they are good. All of them have been good. And quite a pitching staff. There's another strike on two. Ray certainly enjoying the fruits of his pitcher's labor and his own labor. He deserves it. Pedro picks it up and makes a new friend. AT&T tweet coming, Steve. Mariano's movement is sick. Can't imagine what it looks like from the batter's box. Yep. Yeah, well, well said. I think his movement's quite healthy. I, I know what they mean by sick. How about just nasty? Filthy, yeah. They, they, there's a lot of phrases for good stuff. It's coming Got, at you right now. Yeah. See it run away I mean, off that outside corner, and that you know, before it gets to you, it, it's looking pretty good, and that's a lot of late movement. You're seeing something that's uh, maybe a fraction of the way in, a percentage of the way in. That's, really a, that's, the that's a tough take, I bet. Tough take. Let's see where it is. And every once in a while, with him painting the corner like that, you know, you you'll get that call every once in a while. You won't get it all the time. Again, walked him. First walk of the night issued by Liriano. Mike allows a base runner with two outs. That's going to cause Clint Hurdle to pick up the telephone. And the last call Euclides Rojas and order up a reliever. Yep. Last time. Tony Watson. Yep. This time out, seven and two thirds innings for Liriano. Center fielder Shane Robinson takes a strike. Or took ball high. I don't know. Beg your pardon. I think it was in there. Jeff Kellogg called it ball one. Two and, oh. and as well as Liriano has pitched tonight, giving up just the four hits and the one run, and Hurdle getting the bullpen started now that he's walked a man with two outs. Is that a sign of fatigue at this point in the game, perhaps? Could be. Last two pitches. Uh, and last three pitches. And if he loses Robinson, we're going to see Ray Searich come out more than likely. With a visit. Well, the thing you you like him it, it now when he's throwing the ball like he has to that previous batter in these three pitches. You want to get this seventh inning in, keep it clean for Tony Watson. Four pitch walk to Shane Robinson. With two outs, he's walked two, and this is going to bring the tying run to the plate. So well, the infield will slow things down for Tony Watson, and here comes Ray out of the third base dugout. Both bullpens busy right now. Sarah's first visit tonight. And all of a sudden, it's, uh, and, and this happens, all of a sudden, a pitcher can hit the wall. And well, you might say the, the legs get a little rubbery. Uh, I can't say he ran the bases because it was a, it was basically a, a, a stroll to first base on the it was a brisk bunt. walk down the first. You're being kind of brisk. <laughs> so you see the pitches by inning very efficient, except for the seven, where we are right now with 22 pitches. Two outs, Cosma up, two men on. And, upstairs. and if it is fatigue, what you're doing out there, your, your manager has given you one more batter, basically. And you want to find a way, whether it's a line shot at somebody or whatever, whatever it is, whatever can happen to get you that one more out. Snap throw it out of first base and not on the bag. Sanchez behind it. I uh, I flinched with that one. Well, you see Russell release it down to first, and there's nobody there. But Gabby was coming over behind the bag, made the catch. And they got two and zero up on the scoreboard. This, but this is. One and one, as you can see, the umpire. And, uh, 
I don't know quite what Russell was thinking there. Maybe he just wants to keep him honest. If it is one one. It's two. It's two. And all of a sudden, Francisco is laboring. And uh, is that Dave Jowes telling Clint that he's ready? Two on, two out, 4 1 Pirates in the seventh. Liriano's 2 1 delivery. Foul back is 2 and 2. So Francisco, a chance to get out of it here if we can get Cosma. Wobble down the stretch of this seventh inning. And get to the seventh inning stretch. Robinson, the runner at first base. Over at second is David Freeze, both recipients of two out walks and Slippery Rocks, Matt Adams on deck. Count is full, and the runners will get a head start. Two. Stretch. The payoff pitch. In the air to center field. We're touching is. right there to get it. Huge. Absolutely huge. And in spite of the two, two out walks, Liriano gets out of the inning. Stretch time at PNC Park. We keep you here to enjoy the sounds and sights of this great crowd on this opening night of this five game series. Fans, it's time. Thank you very much. As the Red Sox have the second best record in the majors right now, and the Pirates the third, with the Cardinals having the top record in the big leagues. Pitch outside to Neil Walker. Turns around about right handed against the lefty Zipchinski on the Pirate dugout. Liriano getting a hug from Charlie Morton. Getting his nights through. Jeff Locke, pat on the back, his fellow left hander. Yeah, one more bullet in the gun to get that out. The center field to pop up. And that inning could have gone a whole other way had he missed with that last pitch. On a 3 2 pitch with two outs, that was Paul Four. And the tying run would have been on. And, and if he had just, you know, sometimes you just feel like you're going to throw a strike and hope for the best, and that becomes very vulnerable to something they hit very hard. Will Walker has reached base four times successfully tonight, only once with a hit. 
He's been hit by a pitch twice and now he starts the inning off with a base on ball. Nothing up on the board for the Pirates since the first inning. Their pitching has been that good to make it hold up. Luriano has been that good. We'd love to get some cushion. Cutch one for three with an RBI. We'd love to get some cushion, but sometimes there's just not any cushion there, and you just got to run the table with your pitching, which you've been doing a lot of this season. Well, the way the game started, four runs in the first. Cutch's RBI single came in the first inning. Pedro Alvarez with a three run homer to back Liriano's efforts. And then the next inning, the bases were loaded in the uh, Russell Martin up. And uh, Russ ended up striking out. Russ has typically done pretty well with the bases loaded in his career, but they left them full. And after that, they haven't had more than a base runner on per inning. Working against the Cardinal bullpen and lefty Mark Zipchinski. Walker off of first and pitched him a catch and banged up the middle for a base hit. That was a nice looking swing. Just just sending that ball right up to the direction it came from. Just doing what you could with it. That was a, that was a good looking swing. Good looking contact. Good looking baseball player. Get back to it. And actually taking an outside pitch and sending it back to the middle. Two on now. Pulls it in the second base. Again, we've, we've got another setup for Pedro like we had in the first. Left on left matchup. Zuchinski deals ball one low. Pedro with 27 home runs. Three of the 27 have been off lefties. So he's been actually been in this situation three times tonight. A couple of runners on three different times. He's cashed in once. Two balls, no strikes. With the bases uh, having two men on in the second inning, Pedro walked. Now gets ahead of Zipchinski. Now, coming out, Derek Lilliquist, the pitching coach. Talk to Zipchinski. Fernando Salas, the right hander, had been warming up in the bullpen. Thirty-two thousand eighty-four on hand tonight on this Monday night. Cardinals and Pirates and a doubleheader tomorrow. Starting at 4:05. It's a true double header, so not a separate admission, not a split. You get both games tomorrow. Back to back. Over to first base. We get the runners over, so an effective out. Now two men in scoring position. Walker down to third base and McCutcheon over at second base. Pedro gets him over. And he's out three unassisted. Do it for Zabchinski as Daniel Descalso will come out, part of a double switch. Cosma heading to the dugout. We'll see Fernando Salas. So Descalso will come in on the nine spot. And Cosma made the final out of the seventh inning. Goes to the dugout, and that is where Salas will enter in the eighth spot. So Mike Matheny making the move and a pitching change as he lifts the left hander Mark Zipchinski. Third pitcher used tonight by St. Louis is Fernando Salas. Pirates with a 4 1 lead, bottom of the seventh.
Terrific pictures from the AGH cam tonight. Pirates a four to one lead. Four runs on six hits. St. Louis one run on four hits. Descalso takes over at shortstop. And Fernando Salas is the new pitcher and the right hander will face Russell Martin the infield drawn in one out runners at second and third. First pitch from Salas is a ball. Spent some time on a disabled list with shoulder miseries and then some time in Memphis to play a play of the Cardinals. Last appearance was. Yesterday at Atlanta pitched an inning gave up two hits and a run. Cardinals were swept by the Braves. Three straight games coming into this series. And the Pirates took one of three from Miami back into that road trip after taking three of four from the Nationals. Took one of three from Cincinnati at the beginning of that trip. Went five and five on the road trip. Three and zero to Martin. And Salas out of the bullpen, a pitch away from loading the bases. And they're going to just put him on now that the count has gone to three and zero. Oh. They'll take their chances with Gabby Sanchez, and the bases loaded. Set up the double play. One out, they can create the force here. And intentional walk to Martin. Root, root, root for the Pirates. And root Sports. McCutcheon and Martin and, and all the rest of the box. Mariano and Ray Surridge visiting, going over things. Gabby Sanchez with a terrific opportunity to add some insurance for the Pirates here. And 233. It's his first at bat of the ball game, taking over defensively for Garrett Jones in the top of the inning at first. You'd love to get a bunch, but you really, really, really need to get one. A Salas pitch to Sanchez. One ball and one strike. Been a while for Gabby since his last home run. 25th of June at Seattle. Started three of the last four games at first base. Started yesterday, one hitless and three at bats. Thursday afternoon, Washington had a big game, went three for three. One one to Sanchez. Takes up high. Third base, Neil Walker. Second base, Andrew McCutcheon. Russell Martin over at first. And Salas is not going to dazzle you with his speed. He just gave you his best bowl at 90 miles an hour. So you've got a great opportunity. He might go away from the fastball here, but it's dangerous if he misses to go three and one with maybe a secondary pitch. Take by Gabby. Way ahead, three and one. And he got the call too with a very, very close pitch. He came back inside. Very close. Salas could have gotten that call. Ball had some, had some movement back run in. to the glove side, didn't it? Yep. All for two this year with the bases loaded is Sanchez. Right off the mask of Molina. That'll fill up the count. You know, it's. It, it sounds a little complicated, but with that pitch that uh, they call the ball inside to Gabby Sanchez, a ball running from the corner away will have more of a tendency to get called. Let me see the, the shot called a ball, a ball that's away from the strike zone and is running back toward this, the, the corner to get a strike. Many times you, you have a better chance of getting a strike call. It's moving back toward the strike zone, not moving away from it. Uh, pitches hit high in the air to right field tagging is Walker and the Pirates have just recorded their first sacrifice fly since the 27th of May to an outfielder they did have one on the 14th of June it was Neil Walker's to first baseman Adrian Gonzalez of the Dodgers 
Andrew McCutcheon against the Tigers on May 27th with the last sacrifice fly. And <laughs> Gabby knows that's important. The Pirates now lead it five to one. That's an unfamiliar sight right there, a sacrifice fly. I, I tell you, I've never heard as much discussion about the lack of a sacrifice fly as I've heard in the last month, and uh, they finally break the ice here. A productive at bat for Sanchez. He gets the run in. Find a way to get it in. And now you're kind of somewhat in a bonus round. 27th RBI for Gabby. Now it's Presley at base hit. McCutcheon's on his horse. Coming around third. Alex Presley, an RBI single with two outs. It is 6 to 1, Buckles. And that is huge. That is huge because you never know how many you're going to need. Simple as that. Is Alex Presley's first RBI for the Pirates this year that wasn't a solo home run. <laughs> His third RBI of the year. And well struck through the right side. And I don't think you're going to get this guy. No, that's a done deal. Barmas a chance with two on and two on. Fouls it off. Yeah, you can start uh, playing Ray Stevens song. They call him the streak coming around. So two of those runs charged to Mark Zipchinski. Closes the book on him. One and a third. Two hits. Two earned runs. A walk and no strikeouts. Salas responsible for both runners on base. Oh, one to Barnes. Sign for a ball. One ball, one strike to Clint. Here comes the 1 1 pitch from Salas. And Barnes hammers this one to left center field and deep. This ball is going into the match. Two runs are going to come in. Martin scores. Presley right behind him. Second double of the ball game for Parmas. It's 8-1. to one. And he burns him again. They're not giving Clint Parmas enough respect. They're playing him short. And he's killing him. And that one did not have a lot of hang time. That got out there in a hurry. Matt Holiday not able to chase it down. And the Pirates break it open. Right in the go zone, he turns that ball, extends his arms, turns it back around, and gets it out close to the notch very quickly. Root Sports. Everybody's liking it. If you're not wearing a red shirt, you're liking this ball game. Well, great to see him getting back going at this time of the year. And now Starling Marte makes an appearance as a pinch hitter, hitting for Liriano. Take did not start tonight. Gets a chance to swing the bat. Heading back to July 20th, Marte hitting only 108, four for 37. So a mental break for him tonight. Just a bit of a break. He, he knew coming into the game he wasn't going to be in. And I guess when you when you know ahead of time, you know what your day is going to be like. And now tomorrow. Can assume he's going to be back in the lineup and see if the day off helps. It's helped McCutcheon a little bit. He had a day off yesterday. That's foul ball for a strike one and two. Big time breakout inning for the Pirates. And Liriano gives him seven innings. Good start for Francisco Liriano and the Pirates giving him extra runs here. He's the pitcher of record to the good right now. Jake Westbrook on the hook. Marte to right field and that ball is going to curl toward the seats and deflects in. Francisco Liriano once again giving the Pirates an outstanding start. Just four hits and in seven innings. The two walks came late. The eight strikeouts he continues to be the man on the Pirate starting rotation.
one two to Marte. The ground ball toward the middle. That's through for a base hit. Vargas will turn third and score. A pinch hit RBI single for Marte. It's nine to one. And I'll tell you the Pirates sending a little message to not only the Cardinals but sending a message to their fans. Everybody's been wondering what's this series going to be like, and it can play out a whole lot of different ways. I mean, they could. Well, there's all kind of possibilities, but boy, they are they are playing themselves a fine baseball game tonight so far. Well, this is welcome for Marte, who has been struggling with the bat lately. Got the two-strike pitch where he can handle it. Drove in another run. Back to the top of the order, and Jose Tabata. Back one to Jose. Walk twice. He's 0 for 2. Farmus swinging a good bat lately. Two doubles tonight. One of them producing a pair of runs. Uh, he, you know, these guys are all easy to root for. He's one of the easiest ones to root for. Uh, when things are going bad and they they have been going bad for Clint, he's the same person as he will be tonight after this very productive night. Good for you, Clint. He's a pro's pro. And a little uh, crossing on the cake with that really terrific play early in the ballgame on the pitcher. That'll never get any notice. But that was a fine play. He continues to do that. Tomato takes take strike three, and the inning comes to an end. Nine men come to the plate in the seventh inning. And the Pirates put up a five spot. Fans loving it at PNC Park. That's getting up close and personal. I don't know the Pirates dug out. The Clemente jersey just working. Well, a special edition of Inside Pirates Baseball. The Bucks, at the 2013 All Star Game, a Bucko affair by sending more All Stars to this year's Midsummer Classic than they have in decades. Tune in as we follow the Bucks to New York on Inside Pirates Baseball 2013 All Star Game, presented by Allegheny Health Network tomorrow at 3. Move Sports. Check it out tomorrow afternoon. Right before the Pirates play two kind of changes. Marte stays in the game and left. Alex moves over to right. Mr. Watson coming in to work here in the eighth inning with an eight run lead. And St. Louis batters will have an opportunity to see a lot more speed. As he follows Francisco Liriano, who is again was just outstanding. Seven runs or seven innings in one run. Pirates with nine runs on the board. You know how many runs they scored the last time they played the Cardinals? 28th of April? Nine. Okay. Beat them nine nothing. 
at Bush Stadium. Jeff Locke got the win that day. That was his third. Scalso swing and a miss. He was behind in the count. 0 and 2. And the Pirates hoping to improve what uh, their season record would be 4 and 2 with a win tonight against the Cardinals. The score ends the way it is. They will have outscored the Cards 18 to 1 over the last two games they've played them. Shark Tank's been activated. Not feed the Sharks. Mark Melanson picked that up in Seattle. Now it sits in the bullpen. One, two, three goes to Scalso. Tony Watson, the high velocity strike. One out for the cards in the eighth. Bullpen now has tossed a combined six and a third scoreless innings in the last three games coming into tonight. And as a bullpen combined, a 286 earn run average. That's second among all National League teams. A little bit behind Atlanta, the Braves 262 out of their pen. Mark Melanson getting his nightly routine in. Not warming up. They go out there in a sweatshirt and do some different things. Pitch without a ball. Kind of a shadow type of warm up. One of those tweets coming through that uh, Liriano could become the first prior pitcher since 71 to win 11 games in his first 15 starts. That would have been Doc Ellis. Right. The doctor. And we mentioned it at the beginning of the telecast. It's worth mentioning again, I think, Steve. He missed the first month of the season. And he's working on his 11th win. The way I mentioned Doc Ellis because I had a chance to go down to the Clemente Museum and get a, uh, an early screening that still needs some editing of a, a documentary, D O C K. Really? And, uh, but that's interesting. It's going to be sent to some uh, film festivals. I, I was very impressed with it. They, they did a, a wonderful job showing that he was not just a one dimensional Doc Ellis. Many, many layers, as most people have. 1-1 one, one to Carpenter. It's in the dirt. I think you've, you've quoted him a couple of times referring to himself in the third person as the doctor. Doc Ellis at yeah, the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Who's going to be the one what am going to the bullpen? That was a quote. Doc said, Blass ain't going. Moose ain't going. And you know the doctor ain't going to the bullpen. When Danny Murta had a little meeting about the inept work of the fire starters. <laughs> To the shallow center and a long run for McCutcheon, and he's going to make the play. Oh. Looked like a pass pattern. Looked like a steward pass pattern. They all went out, and then they all peel different ways, and the guy comes up the middle and makes the catch. First down. Two men out now. Barmas was out, Walker was out, and McCutcheon coming in on the play. So Barmas making a reaching attempt, but McCutcheon going all the way. It's his play. Could have been a little bit of a scary situation too, had they not peeled away or gotten out of Andrew's way. A lot of laundry for. Bones, Scott Bonnet, clubhouse attendant for the Pirates. Clubhouse Mater D. Use some extra bleach to get all the dirt out of the guys' uniforms tonight. They've been flying all over the field. Just to follow up, one last comment about uh, veteran Pirate fans. It was nice in that documentary to uh, show not only what Doc did on a positive note, pitching, some of the negative things, all the negative, and some of the way he cleaned things up at the end and did some very positive things and helped. Uh, more than a few people in terms of uh, people incarcerated, people with drug and alcohol problems. So Doc turned it back around at the end and uh, did some good things, some very good things. 
Carlos Beltran. But was he a handful? Well, he was a handful. 2 1, grounder to Walker. Takes care of the Cardinals in the eighth inning. Nice work by Tony Watson. Had some help from Andrew McCutcheon defensively. 9 1, Pirates. For the Bucks, one run on four hits for the Cardinals. Francisco Lariano spectacular again tonight. John Jay takes over in center field for Mike Matheny's Cardinals. And Shane Robinson moves over to right field as Carlos Beltran takes a seat. And Walker smacks it down to second base. Carpenter throws him out. One pitch and one out in the Pirates' eighth inning. Fernando Salas will face McCutcheon now. And Alvarez to follow. Rob Johnson doing the catching. So Molina gets an early seat. An eight run ball game. The Cardinals have three guys who can catch Tony Cruz, Rob Johnson, and of course Molina. That's why you saw Cruz pinch hitting earlier, but both of the right handed options off the bench for Matheny were his catchers, so he could afford to burn one of them. And it was Cruz who got to hit in the sixth, and it paid off. He hit a triple. Ended up scoring the lone Cardinal run tonight. Oh, one to catch, two hits, and an RBI. Balls and two strikes. Not only is this the beginning of a five-game series, Steve. The first five-game series, by the way, since 2001, just the second five-game series in the history of the ballpark. They played the Astros in a five-gamer in the 2001 series, but it's also the start of a long homestand. Five here with the Cardinals, three with the Rockies over the weekend, and then a day off, and then the Marlins come in. And Clint Hurdle was telling us the same umpiring crew will be here for this series, so we'll see Jeff Kellogg again behind the plate on Thursday where the umpire rotation yeah. will work. That's what we expect anyway. And uh, it is extremely rare in the major leagues to see the same umpire behind the plate twice in a series. And that fills up the count at three and two. AJ Burnett will pitch in the early game tomorrow. 405. We don't know exactly who is going to pitch in the second game. Pirates have made a decision on that, but have not informed anybody about it. Towering fly ball, but not very deep. And Robinson will make the catch. Just speculation on my part, but whoever that pitcher is, probably the reason they haven't announced him is because he may not have made it to the ballpark yet. 
So what for the game? So they, they want to make sure he's here before he can pitch. That's been typically the way that Glenn Hurdle has done stuff when he brought guys in. Is that they don't Can't say do it until the they, they talk to the guy or the guy arrives. Well, Victor Black is warming up. Made his major league debut on the road. Came out of the bullpen in D.C. to make his big league debut. Uh, on Thursday, the day game. 1 0 pitch. Pedro fouls it back. A chance to get his feet wet again. Victor Black. Well, again, we saw one of those examples when Josh Harrison was recently called up. Harrison had a drive up here. And the Pirates didn't make the announcement of the move that Harrison was going to be here. Until he arrived at the ballpark, so they knew he was actually on site. Okay, so he doesn't arrive. The car breaks down. They can change <laughs> the plans. Yeah, but either way, here, here's here's what's going to happen tomorrow. Pirates don't have to make a roster move if they call up a pitcher to pitch in that second game. Due to major league rules that are recently changed, last couple of years, you can add a 26th player for double headers. Alvarez is swinging a bit, so they're not going to have to make a, a roster move to add somebody for the call up if that's the case. Well, we did see Mr. Compton earlier in the year. Very impressive in his early work in that game in the summer. And he would be a candidate, you'd have to think. 2 2 pitch. And Pedro foul tips it into the glove of Johnson. And the Pirates are gone in order. On to the top of the ninth. Buckos looking to wrap up a win. Here comes rookie Vic Black. But trust me, his voice is still being heard in the clubhouse. It's hard to watch baseball going on without you, but I'm here in this clubhouse and uh, I'm not under a, on a surgery table. So to me, this is the best case scenario for right now. That doesn't mean, you know, you guys can cross section all you want here, but um, I'm going to be I'm going to be ready before the season's out. You can mark my word on that. You got to love that, guys. In fact, when the team buses rolled back into town last night here at PNC Park, Jason Grilly, who does not live too far from the stadium, actually came here to greet him. He did not want to wait any longer to say hello to his teammates. He's been watching on TV long enough. That says a lot about a guy who's really opened up his heart to the, well, not only his teammates, but to the city. Can't wait for him to come back, huh? Yeah, it'll be great. And, you know, chatted with Jason in the clubhouse for a bit today myself, and he gave me an interesting number. Uh, and, and He's very positive, very upbeat, and he's trying to make the best of the situation. So the silver lining he looks at is that he's going to be rested when he comes back. And, and I said, well, you know, I guess rest is always a good thing. And he said, well, he goes, I'm only 11 innings away from my workload from a year ago. He said, if you count the inning in the All-Star game and the inning he pitched in the World Baseball Classic, he's only 11 innings away from, from the workload. And I asked him, well, yeah, do you put much stock in innings pitched? 
Yeah. As opposed to an appearance. You can have an appearance as four pitches as opposed to an appearance that's 23 pitches. You know? so they, they're definitely said now appearances are the thing. So I'll, I'll tell you one thing. He is not going to out talk Rick Sofield. I know that. <laughs> Rick's going to get the last word here. Now Rick, uh, former first round pick by the Twins, played three years in the big leagues with Minnesota. Had a, a great time of work on the caravan as he, he joined us down in uh, West Virginia. We had a lot of fun. And Victor Black, the Texan, delivers strike one to Matt Holiday. Holiday tonight is one for three, hit into a double play in the sixth, had a base hit in the fourth. Follows this one off. Mr. Black's not uh, not reluctant to turn that fastball loose, is he? No, we noticed in spring training that he was very noticeable because yeah, of well, the velocity. Yeah. Guys, guys ball. from Texas aren't really hesitant to turn it loose. <laughs> to throw it that hard. Country fastball he possesses. There's one upstairs. One ball and two strikes. Got to be a thrill. Black's family on hand in Washington to see him make his major league debut Thursday. Allowed a walk, struck out Ian Desmond, the shortstop for the Nationals, and he stranded his one inherited runner. 96 on the gun. He was called up from AAA Indianapolis on the 23rd of July. And in AAA, 1 and 2, 15 saves, a 231 earned run average. 51 strikeouts in 29 appearances. Holiday just caught a piece of that one. From the home folks, first game of a big series, big crowd, big thrill. At the time of his promotion, he was third in the International League and first among Pirate farmhands in saves. Those 15. Two and two to. Matt Holiday, top of the ninth, nobody out. That's a nine to one lead. Trying to put this one away. John Margoma is getting up. I don't know if he's just throwing or the Pirates want to get him some work. He hasn't had a lot. Drop my pencil. Drop your pencil? Yep, there we go. Oh, we have people who can get that first. Another base hit to right field by Holiday. Well, I pointed that out in the fourth inning, Steve. More often than not, we see Holiday his hits against the Pirates going in that direction. And can that be where the Pirates are pitching him? They continue to pitch him away? Well, nothing wrong with staying away that, from that kind of power. Any good hitters will will take what they give you. There could be a fact that he's just seen a lot of fastballs too that they don't want to throw any breaking balls that he can turn more easily on. One ball, no strikes to Alan Craig. It could be a scenario too with Gomez out there in case this young man gets you know struggles. They they don't want to. You know, Second major league appearance have a, a negative uh, outing and, and have that leave a bad taste just in case you know he, he really struggles terribly. Danger struck out twice tonight. He's flied out too. It's not so much that the game would be in danger, it's just that we uh, uh, want, it, want it to be something positive for him. And if it's not, get him out of there. He wouldn't have a chance to have something positive next time. Strike out of play, and it's one and two to Craig. Well, double dip tomorrow, Steve. Getting ready to dig in. Yep. Eat your Wheaties early and get ready. You got two games. It's a long day. Two balls and two strikes. Lance Lynn going tomorrow. He was scheduled to go in the second game, 
and now is going to go in the first as Mike Matheny during the game announced that not he personally with the Cardinals during the game announced they were going to flip flop pitchers so Lions will go in the second game and Lynn will oppose AJ Burnett game one tapper over the mound Barmas charging gets the out of first base. Second base is Holiday, safe there. Miners doing a good job with the glove tonight and the bat. Yeah, Clint was thinking about taking a shot, and getting the lead runner, maybe getting a double play if he was going to be close enough as he came across the middle of the infield. But they're not sure. Take what they give you. Only need two more. Catcher Rob Johnson will get a chance to hit his first plate appearance tonight. Stay at third, first and third, and one out. Bat single for the catcher Johnson. That bat blew up. Slowed down by the AGH can. Stick in the grass. Here are your divots. David Freeze, the third baseman. He is without a hit. He's grounded out twice and walked. 0 for 2 tonight. Just six for the Cardinals. Mariano gave up four. I think this young man has got his arm loose. I think he's. I think so. I think he's warm. Yeah. Loosened up. Number 68, he uh, winds up uh, being successful as a major league pitcher. That member will have a chance to come down. So I that, uh, you guys are kind enough to show one of my bubblegum cards with number 54. What was the highest number you had? Was it 54? 54, or yep. Early. What was your first year when you were uh, right out of high school? Well, my first spring training was 54. Really? And then 53. And I came to the big leagues, it was 28 or 23. And then Went back to the minor leagues, came back that 28. And none of those, by the way, were requested. Were Just given to. Yeah, that's the way it worked back then. They give you a major league uniform. You were lucky as an 18 year old, or you didn't get like number 95 or something. No, you didn't. Very Triple lucky. Digit, I got invited, to, got invited to a major league spring training camp when I was 18. The Pirates had just won the World Series. Locked him up. But Tried to get the swing around and thought about stopping. Two balls and two strikes on freeze. 25 year old Victor Black out of Amarillo, Texas. 6'4, 214. He is Amarillo Slim. Isn't that the uh, poker player, Amarillo Slim? I think the uh, uh, Texas poker player. Oh, he hits him. He's going to load the bases. And that's going to hurt. See if that's going to do it for Victor. And I'm, I'm convinced that's why the head Gomez is warming up in case it just gets to be too much of a negative. Well, maybe not. Ray's going to come out first, and Clint's going to make a call out there and activate the bullpen again. And Brian Moore. So uh, it looked to me like maybe Gomez was just throwing on the side. That one Ouch. got away. This is what it sounds like. That's me. That's that's like. Sylvester Stallone and that meat packing thing punching out that carcass. Well, the base is loaded and Black can still get out of it here if he can get Shane Robinson to hit a sharp ground ball somewhere. Robinson runs well and might not be the easiest to double up. He's only grounded into two double plays this season. Victor Black can also throw it by a couple of people for a while and just leave everybody where they are. Get that kind of an arm. Brian Morris going now. Bases full of Cardinals, one out, top of the ninth inning, 9 1 Pirates. 
Ball one. First appearance at PNC Park for Victor Black. Part of the message might have been relayed by racers. Don't aim the ball now. Turn it loose. Don't let up just to throw strikes. It's not the right road to travel. This is not much fun for either bench now. Pirates wanting to get it over with. Cardinals probably thinking along the same lines. It's Cardinals have already taken their stars out of the ball game, and Molina Beltron took them out early. Well, earlier. An eight run deficit. Athena getting them out of there. Hit. Cardinals are going to add a run or two. Well, they're going to add one right here. From station to station as Holiday scores. And the leash getting shorter on Victor Black. Black giving up a run here in the ninth. And it's now nine to two. Almost in an RBI base hit. Pinch hitter announced it is Matt Adams out of Slippery Rock. One more hitter. Seven run lead, one out in the ninth. Strike call. Adams might be a double play candidate. He's grounded into seven of them. Black keep the ball low and induce a ground ball. Eight for 24 is a pinch hitter, though. He's done a good job hitting 333 coming off the bench. Big enough, isn't he? Ball in one strike. Pirates can hang on and register the win. They'll pull within a half game of first place in the Central. And tomorrow in game one would play for the division lead. And would send the Cardinals down to their fourth loss in a row. Strike two to Adams. You and Greg, we'll give you our, our our probables for tomorrow. How's that for the announcers? Can you do that. You and yeah, Greg. Can, you yeah. And what? Greg, no, no, no. Are they are they here yet? Well, you're here. <laughs> Greg's over in the booth. So we can release that information. Yeah, you, you and Greg are going tomorrow in game one. Walk you and I in game two. Adams fouls it off. You, you walk. You're going in game one, also. Well, on the radio, so. the radio, yes. <laughs> Jay Burnett observing tonight. We'll get to go in game one. Go huh? back. That's an old pirate logo. I like that logo. Strike three. Adams out. Went away from the fastball. Cardinals down to their final out tonight. See what happens there, Victor, when you when you pull the string on him a little bit. Very nice. Off speed. Oh, nearly 33,000, just under 33,000 on their feet. Flags are waving. And the Pirates looking for win number 62. Scalso takes the ball. He struck out on three pitches. Tony Watson retired him in the eighth inning in his first at bat. And then as part of a double switch, play shortstop for St. Louis. And take the Bucks back up to 20 games over 500. A lot of good things possible here. The center field. This should do it. McCutcheon can a car. Pirates win. They're within a half game of the Cardinals. For first place in the Central, Victor Black finishes it up as the Pirates trail the Cards by just a half game and a twin bill coming tomorrow, beginning at 4:05. A message sent, first game of the homestand, but more importantly, the first game message sent to the Cardinals, the Pirates. Yeah, we're going to show up, and they show up beautifully to win the opening game. That's 
a great start to the series. Francisco Liriano is the first Pirate Southpaw since Zach Duke in 2009 to get 11 wins on the year. He is now 11 and 4.